Hello and welcome to another session of Reminiscing with History Makers. I'm joined today by Randy Surratt. Randy, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm happy to be with y'all. So for starters, when did you join APCO? January 1992. And during your tenure with APCO, tell us about some of the agencies you worked for, the positions you held, and you know some of those responsibilities. Uh, became a member of the High Point City Fire Department in 1977 as a dispatcher and quickly was exposed to the APCO bulletin because my fire chief was a member and the mail went through me kind of. The mailbox for everyone was in the comm center so I stole his APCO bulletin and read it before he did. And that's how I became familiar with APCO. It was 10 years later I realized that the fire chief that actually worked, no pun intended, under me in the basement was the fourth national president of APCO, Ben Lou Allen. And mm. so I didn't really become uh, associated with APCO. I just learned about APCO through the bulletin. And later on, I became involved, you know, with some of the local, with the chapter and, and things like that. Great. What initially drew you to join APCO? Well, after uh, reading the magazine and eventually going to a few conferences and chapter meetings, I eventually joined, but that was years later after I had left the fire department and joined the emergency communications division which had been put together after high point went online with 911 so i basically did the same job i just had to move to a different area i chose to do that i could have stayed at the fire department but i by then i was dug in with emergency communications so i learned police dispatch and then in turn taught the others how to fire dispatch and that's when i became a member because i moved that year and then started to get involved with uh, the chapter and held to office. I was a region rep for a few years and then eventually became the chapter historian. Hmm. Uh, can you describe for us uh, some of your APCO activities at the state chapter or the national level during your tenure at APCO? I was always what I call a worker bee. I, I chose not to really be on the board, even though I was for four or five years as a region rep, I was very active at our state conference. And uh, in 96, we already had the chapter of North Carolina NENA chapter, so we started conferencing and having our meetings together. And back in those days, our conference every fall was themed out with a lot of emphasis on the coast because most of our, our conferences were on the coast of North Carolina and Wilmington. And so whenever that theme was announced, I'd go to work in my workshop making something that, that would be on display at the conference and helped uh, all the people that decorated, which I, was, I worked with the girl that did that for like 16 years. And then I think it was about the time I retired in 2007, the North Carolina chapter had a perpetual plaque there with all of our presidents, all the chapter presidents, and it was not complete. In fact, there were errors in it. So the president at the time, our, our chapter president, who was preparing to leave office, said, why don't you work on that? Because you're getting ready to retire. You don't have anything to do. And as it started as a joke, I actually took that on, worked on it, researched it. And by 2012, when we had our 50th anniversary, chapter anniversary I had that complete I had a list I had the correct list of every North Carolina president in the correct order and in the time that they served and we're still uh, I've passed my historical uh, duties on to someone else younger in the chapter but now we're up to two plaques we filled that one up and the other major accomplishment for APCO uh, which goes in not just the chapter but also national is that another chapter president had told me that he wanted to see more action with preparing or at least getting some of our members to the senior level and if it's possible to the national lifetime level so 
I took that on by myself and did some research on what the qualifications were. So I was able to get 12 of our members to senior. There's 13 actually, because I'm, I'm there too, but someone else did, did the research on me. But I was responsible for getting 12 of our members to senior status and one other member to senior and national lifetime. And as you know, if, you may, if you're a national lifetime member, you automatically become a senior member. And even though I'm not the historian any longer, I've been told that another one of our members will have lifetime national membership at the next national conference. So I had a hand in that one too. So getting our officers in order and then advancing uh, people to designation that will always be there for National APCO. You'll always be able to look it up and see that they, they're in those categories. That's what I'm most proud of uh, for accomplishments that, that I did for APCO. Oh, that's great. Would you say your APCO membership has had a direct effect on your career in public safety communications? Totally. Totally. To begin with, I, you know, when I first started and went to the first meetings and all that's where it started i started meeting people that did the same work that i did and lifelong friendships and you add to that when you were able to go to a a national conference and i might add when i'm able to go to a national conference i love volunteering at the national conferences i mean i just i just love it i would love being on the move give me a task i i don't i don't care how far i have to walk or just tell me what you need I love doing that. I hope to do some more, but people know me from that. I mean, it's like when people see me even now, I've been retired a long time. They know what I did for a living and they might not even know what APCO is, but they know that's associated with me somehow. And so, uh, yeah, it's one that I've, I've never had a, a moment where I wished I hadn't carried forward. I, I think, uh, and I, and I still know a lot about it. I, I just, it's amazing that a, an organization like that can thrive uh, since 1935 and the, uh, all this the technology. And so I'm, I'm still impressed with them. And if people ask me, even though I've been long retired, I can explain it to them and mm -hmm. let them know. You, there are still people out there. I don't know if y'all hear this. There's still people out there that when they call for emergency services and they call 911, they think the nearest... Uh, the police officer nearest the phone is picking it up or or the near the fireman nearest the phone uh, not as many as it used to be but there's still some out there so i like getting them straight on how all this works what would you say you like most about apco i guess it would be the the training that of course i no longer am interested in it but i still read about it Somebody at APCO or someone, I know, I know it's several people, there's always issues that seems like there's new, something that needs to be addressed. Education is the main thing for any topic, but APCO is behind a lot of that. And I'm well, and with that, I'm, I'm happy to be associated or have been associated many years with uh, Gerald Brown Anderson, who is in charge of our education with our chapter. And she's held the telecommunicator symposium for many years. The next one will be in first of December. It's like three or four days, strictly for telecommunicators, mainly for people that are just entered the industry. They're getting their training at work, but they'll come to the symposium and learn some other features about the job that they can go through their career with. And I was, I've always been impressed with the fact that that symposium, and I don't know if there's other chapters that copy that or are doing the same thing, but telecommunicator symposium. It doesn't do any good for directors to come to it or, or, or managers. It's for the people starting out or if you're, if you're still classified as a telecommunicator. And most of the time, the class is always full, around 125, 130. And that's just one example of education. Is there something that you think APCO does better than anyone else? With their publication, with the bulletin, and they just get the word out. You know, they, they, well, I, I see on my emails and list servers and that when there, there's a new class 
about to be presented. Uh, I'm not, I'm not really looking, but I still find it. So they're, they represent themselves very well. They, I've seen them uh, get just totally get better with that through the years. When you go to their national conference, they're well represented there with their own advertising and that sort of thing. I just think they're a total package when it comes to getting the word out about what they stand for and, and the people they're, that they hope to help. Hmm. So now with the advent of NG911, what would you say APCO needs to do to stay current with those emerging technologies? Well, that's where you're going to lose me because I pretty much wrapped up everything when I left. (laughs) I I very seldom get on the keyboard or just hang around the computer much or do anything or actually just keep up. I hear from the younger folks when I go to a meeting or whatever, but if there's some way APCO can still what I'd like to refer to as an old school system that helped me along and new technology will help you with that too but I would like for APCO to understand that everything's not going to go to schedule you're going to have to decide someone sitting in that chair with a headset on and they're going to take a call that's going to have them go totally outside the box now, I don't know how younger folks are handling that today or how what they're allowed to do, but this old boy went outside the box quite a bit without breaking any rules. I might have gone off script quite a bit, but I got the job I got the job done, and I never left work without my throwing my scratch paper away. So some things I held in my hand all day long because it didn't have to be done at that moment because I was busy answering 911 or doing something important. But before I hit the door, sometimes I'd be an hour late going home because I had to finish putting in something that was on my scratch paper that I'd been holding all day. And then once I crossed everything off, I threw it away. So APCO, and they're already doing a pretty good job of this, but as you go through the years with this technology and all, just make sure you're covering all the T's and dotting all the I's. Absolutely. What stands out to you as a significant contribution during your time in office? Most everyone in the North Carolina chapter has heard my name, and I, I've, I've done quite a bit. I, there was one thing for the conference that a friend of mine, we went out and uh, collected uh, the gifts, you know, for the, the giveaways. We, we got some impressive items during those times, and uh, people started looking forward to it and all. And I think another chapter, uh, somebody contacted him years ago about, how do y'all do that, whatever, you just go knock on doors or something like that. We had. Sometimes we'd gather up maybe 50 or 70 different uh, gifts to give away at the conference when they call your number. So it's been a variety of stuff, and being a region rep and keeping up with my co- uh, co- counties every two months, I had to report on what they had, uh, what was going on in their comm centers and all. But after it's all said and done, I'm most proud of those plaques I told you about. The history was lost. It was basically lost, and if you go further in time, it's going to get uh, further back in everyone's mind. Some of the people that I talked to to get that plaque straightened out actually have passed away, and um, so when it's all said and done, having that uh, our North Carolina state chapter arrangement of every president since 1962, I did that all by myself, and I'm most proud of that. That's great. Once again, this has been a session of Reminiscing with History Makers. Randy, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your experience. Well, thank you. I'm glad you asked me.